we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Um, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life I found something this morning. I was so stoked. I was just like a little teenage girl on Christmas morning, waiting for an iPad. And I, I um, was playing with the settings on the DJI Mimo, and you can actually do like um, they have this setting in there to make you look better than what you actually look. So I tapped that thing out to the max. Um, they have this like uh, thinner like I have like a scale bar right and um, they have this thing that says I think it's slim slim mode or something and you can dial it in you know so it starts at you know just at zero and you can make yourself bigger or smaller and <laughs> I just went <laughs> and I lost all that weight in my face um, that's funny and then um, you can have this mode called smooth which takes away all your like wrinkles and stuff so max that one out <laughs> this is funny we live in a world of just fake don't we? don't we and I think I shock that world a little bit because I don't do I mean I love my nails I haven't got them on and because I've been doing too much reno and I've got a very big reno coming up um, but um, yeah <laughs> It's just, it's just funny. I'm, I'm not one of those people that will hop on a camera and make sure that I look awesome for you or anything like that. I don't, I don't even own the appliance to do such a thing. Um, yeah, I, actually I do. I have a spack filler. <laughs> that'll, that'll work. Hiya. I just thought I'd show you something. So this is the software that I use for uh, production. Um, so basically I take all the footage and then I sort it all out and re, you know, watch hours of footage and decide what's going to stay and what's not. And then once that process happens, which is actually quite an extensive one, then it actually goes into the production suite and then I start making a YouTube a video out of it. Um, so just this part of it takes about seven or eight hours to produce you know, 20 minutes of video. Um, it all depends. We have a little dilemma today though because some footage is missing and I do recall um, that there was an SD card in Emmy's water bowl. Um, now I'm not saying she'd have put it there. It could have been the mouse that was in the house. Um, I doubt it because you know butter wouldn't melt in her mouth. I asked her and she just looked at me like yay. So anyway, so I'm just sort of adding some footage. So after the breakfast, I went to Bunbury to have a look at some street art. I had seen some uh, loaded up on Facebook and I thought, hang on, you know, I've been to Bunbury a million times and I have never seen street art there. Maybe it's because I'm just not observant. I'm guessing that's probably what it is because it's that's probably <laughs> the way it is. So I decided that I would download the map. Um, I have actually linked it in the description below. So if you need it, um, I would highly recommend that you do it. And one afternoon I took the map down there and I walked for maybe three or four hours and took nearly 400 photos and videos. Um, obviously I'm not gonna share all those with you. Plus it's not no point. Otherwise, why would you go and do it? I think you should go and do it. It's just awesome. Um, yeah, so I have given, just going to put the top, top 10 or so that I really, really loved. So that's next. Wish that I could stay in this moment forever so I can hold you in my arms. I will carry you on my shoulders as long as I'm able. Scatter monsters under your bed. Of an eye. 
today and a bit of touring to go I have to first do the dishes um, so I'll do that while I'm chatting to you and um, today I am off to some caves which is always cool and um, to see a lighthouse I've never been inside a lighthouse and um, yes yeah, so you will be sharing in that lovely journey with me um, and that's about it really and um, so I've just got to have some breakfast from hungry I mean that it's just looks delicious doesn't it? apart from they're a bit burnt but that's actually your fault because I was getting the camera ready for you so you can see my look at these strawberries a friend of mine and her boyfriend went and picked them and um, I got to eat them <laughs> I don't know if her mother know if she knows that her mother gave them to me but Jess thanks mate <laughs> Okay, Nilgi Caves was next. Um, again, I've done that one a few times as well, and every time I do it, I do enjoy it. Um, it was just stifling hot that day, and when we went into the caves, I know it's sort of like a, a temperature that remains the same, um, but there was something different in the air, and I just didn't feel like I could breathe properly. Um, so I kind of just rushed quite through it. I took as much footage as I could, but there was a lot of it that was quite shaky. So, um, yeah, anyway, but this gives you a little teaser and a little taste, and it's, it's definitely worth doing also. Um, you can actually do them the same as I did, and did the lighthouse and then Nilgi straight after. Um, easy in a day, not a problem at all, and they're quite close to each other. So, yeah, definitely worth a shot. All right. never been to a lighthouse and I find that strange because I've seen lots of things and I've been on just about every form of transport including like a hovercraft I mean you know I've covered the bases right but I've never been into a lighthouse and I was so surprised at just how much goes into it and what the purpose of them were you know you just never think of these things you know I'm not a mariner I don't want to know um, but yeah, if, if you're down Albany Way, or oh, not Albany, but um, Bustleton Way, definitely go and do it. It's the best $15 that you'll ever spend. It is brilliant. Um, the lady that uh, was the tour guide, she was sensational. Really, really just so ama amazing at what she was doing. So every lens on the lighthouse flashes at a certain range. So the one that I went and saw, it flashes at two and a half seconds and then at seven and a half seconds so I assume I don't know how long it takes to rotate all the way around but obviously in that rotation at seven and a half seconds it blinks at two and a half seconds it blinks whereas the one further down the Cape's about 130 um, kilometers further south um, is seven and a half and a seven and a half so yeah pretty interesting apparently WA is one of the most if not but definitely considered one of the most treacherous coasts to navigate. So um, that's pretty interesting too, didn't know that. I don't really understand why, but um, yeah, there must be a reason for it somewhere. Um, so yeah, that was really, really interesting. Um, and then we went inside the lighthouse and, how, and they showed us how you, they keep it, how they maintain it. Um, you know, like, uh, the, the ships that are offshore, if there's somebody sick on board of their ship, 
they can let the lighthouse know in advance by flag systems, um, which is really like, you know, unbelievable. Like they hold up a, a certain flag and it's an international language. Um, that means, you know, like there's somebody sick on board that need medical help or, or whatever, whatever they're trying to convey is conveyed through flags, which is just incredible. So um, this lighthouse was manned, it's still working today. It still produces the light, um, it's the same beam all the time, um, but it's not actually manned, so it's automatic now. Um, which is just quite amazing. You know, it used to be the job of three men and they would work um, a four hour shift and then have an eight hour break and then have another four hour shift. Um, and they would man that the lighthouse 24 hours a day. So three families would go out there and live there and they'd be contracted for five or seven years or something like that. And uh, they'd be out in the middle of nowhere, you know, like they'd get a fairly good wage for the time. But um, yeah, pretty harsh lifestyle, you know. Uh, right out in the middle of absolutely nowhere so big credit to them but yeah I would suggest if you ever go down that way do the Bustleton Lighthouse it's all, it's just amazing either one there's there is both and you can do both if you want but um, yeah well worth the trip <music> Okay, a couple days later, I went to Albany to have a look at the whales. <clears throat> um, it was quite expensive actually, it was quite a, a, a pricey little tour and had it produced what it was supposed to produce, it would have been absolutely wonderful, um, but it didn't, alas, uh, that's nature for you. Um, we were waiting on whales, we did see whales, they were there. Um, that they were just making very shallow breaches in the water and it, and it really, you know, and you have to be in the right place and looking at the right piece of water and it's just, it's all stacked against you. Um, so I did ask the people at Albany um, on the tour charters if I could use one of the images that's on their thing and they said yes, of course. So this is the type of footage that they can get. Uh, alas, that was not what we got. <laughs> we got dolphins, which was wonderful. Uh, you know, not complaining, um, but it was a, a very long day because they were the blessing. The people were trying so hard to get us some awesome footage or awesome sights, you know, and and they just the whales were not playing. It's there some days that they're actually really, really uh, like friendly and playful and. Um, today they were they were in a grumpy mood uh, so yeah we did manage to get one tail fin I think of a baby breaching um, but that that was about it and it was really cold really cold <laughs> anyway so yeah if you're down um, Bustleton Bunbury way uh, I think it's around October might be October November time um, that all the whales migrate so um, yeah it, it, it's worth a try this is probably one out of three and you'll get some amazing footage and that's pretty good odds I reckon I just realized one just how glamorous I look this morning um, but I just realized today I've got to fill up my water fill my gas bottle empty the toilet and I'll take you along on two of those journeys not three so, you know, sorry you'll miss out on the water fill. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, but the reason I say that is the gas bottle is, um, I've got a, a very neat little appliance on that, which most of you might like to know about. There's nothing more annoying to me than running out of gas. So, um, yeah, so hopefully we will get that on camera for you today and you can see how tech people gas. Myself with you. Goodbye. Um, I know I don't know of anybody else that has them over here. Um, I found them from my many, many hours of Googling when I was renovating the RV. 
and wanted to find a solution of not running out of gas. So anyway, what I decided to do was research tank sensors and all that sort of stuff. And you get these silly little magnetic things that you can stick on the side of your propane bottle, but they're not very good. You can get the gauges, and but again, you have to go out and check it and all that sort of stuff. And and I didn't, I just don't understand this day of technology that you have to go through that you know why can't I just pick up my phone and have a look well you can so there is a product um, product called Mopeka um, M-O-P-E-K-A I've put an affiliate link down below so if you want to purchase them that's actually the cheapest price that you'll get them and um, I would recommend getting the set of two I got the set of two um, and it also comes with tank spaces and everything but I'll explain what that is in a minute so you can also get one of these. Um, uh, so the Mopika tank sensor um, basically relays information either back to this little device here, which will tell you, um, it'll just start doing a little search and tell you how much gas is in each bottle. Um, or you can have it go back to your phone and you'll see here that my tank is empty. So, um, then what you can actually do, so you can actually check your tank levels whenever you feel like it, or you can actually set on the settings, you'll see down the bottom of the screen, that you can actually put a, you know, a level and it'll email you at that level and say your tank's getting low. Um, and then obviously I've just filled the bottle now and now you can see that the tank sensor is completely full. So it's just basically a tiny little device, it's yay big, um, that is magnetically connected to the bottom of your gas tank or your propane tank um, <clears throat> and that sends a signal through the tank and, and measures the bounce back and how much is in your tank. Obviously all tanks are different, you can customise those, you can do whatever you want or you can just put in a 9 kilo bottle or if you have taller, whatever. It's all customisable within the app which is why the Mopika one is really, really good. Um, so yeah, and you'll never you'll never be out of gas again. You can actually buy one of these, <clears throat> but they're actually mine's not even installed anymore. It's kind of redundant. Why why push the button when I can check on my phone? So um, you know I didn't know enough about them at the time. So don't don't necessarily need this little jobby. The only th time that I reckon you would need that is if you've got um, a husband and a wife, because you can only install it on one um, phone. <clears throat> so it can only be, the sensor can only go to one phone, so it won't go to the husband and the wife's phone at the same time. So if you're both trying to keep track of it, it's not going to happen, then this will be, you'll just press the button and it will tell you what's in there. Um, so yeah, and if, so if you want that, you need to pay an extra $80 or something for it. Um, but that's also in Amazon as well. Okay, have fun. It is awesome. Try it. Got to have it. It's so much better. I know exactly where my gas level is and when I need to go and fill it up. So there, that's my tip, tip for the day. Coming up next on Vamp Van Chronicles is a very long awaited renovation. This 20 year old bathroom in the motorhome has got to come out. And I figure the longest way is the quickest way. So I dismantled the whole lot and rebuilt it. So that's on the next film. I hope to see you there. Hope you like the video. If you have, please smash the like button and subscribe. Thank you.